Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the using static routes with Security Director Learning Byte. And so here is our example. In this example, we have a topology that I want to discuss. First, VSRX1 and VSRX2 are connected together. You can see that over the Geeky001 interface. And then VSRX1 is connected to the internet and also connected to the user on the Gigi 000 and Gigi 002 interfaces respectively. And then on the internet, there's an internet server out there, just a publicly reachable address that we'll be using to run some verification tests. And then we have VSRX2 that connects to the email server using Gigi 000. So the criteria for this example is that we need to configure some static routes on VSRX1 and also VSRX2, but we need to do that using Security Director. Those static routes, the goals of those configured static routes is to be able to reach hosts on the internet, we'll verify reachability pinging that internet server, then user one needs to be able to communicate with the email server. This means that we are going to need to configure static routing on VSRX1 for traffic that is initiated from the user to the email server. Then we'll need to configure static routing on VSRX2 for traffic that is coming back from the email server. So that response from the email server after the user initiates the traffic, we have to enable routing for that as well. And one last thing to talk about security policy and zones and things like that are already configured. Since these are VSRX devices, we need to be aware of that, but it's something we don't have to worry about for this learning byte because that's not what this learning byte focuses on. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to Security Director and get this going. All right, so here is Security Director. By default, after we log in, we get put in the dashboard. And there's nothing really here since this is pretty much a fresh install of Security Director. And so to configure static routes, you might think you need to go to configure mode. And I wouldn't fault you for thinking that, but Security Director configuration mode or configure mode is for configuring primarily security related parameters. And static routing is not a security related parameter. And so that configuration does happen elsewhere. We need to go to the devices workspace and then we select the individual device. In this case, we're selecting VSRX1, select configuration, select modify configuration. And here we get a window that pops up that allows us to configure a bunch of different parameters that is not available under the configuration workspace. So to begin, let's go to static routes on the left and we can configure any static routes here. And with that, we click the Create button. And we are first asked if we want to create an IPv4 or IPv6 static route. In our case, it's IPv4. And let's go ahead and configure that default route first. So 0.0.0.0, .0 for the IP address and prefix range of zero. That's gonna be a default route. Next, we need to go to the next hop section we need to click the Create button to create a new next hop. And we can select IP address or interface. In this regards, we need to select an IP address. We select interface and then use an interface as a next hop. It's not going to work because it's going to try to use that interface as the next hop. And that doesn't work on broadcast interfaces since this is a gigabit Ethernet interface. So keep that in mind since we're working with broadcast interfaces here, we need to use the IP address. So the IP address of the next stop is 172.31.1.2. Click OK. And we can configure other parameters like qualified next hop, configure a next table, and other advanced options. But we're not going to go into that right now. We're just focusing on configuring basic static routing. So click OK. And that's our first static route. We need to configure another static route. So let's click Create. And this is the static route that will point towards the subnet of the email server. Let's use the default of IPv4 and specify the address of 172.29.1.0 slash 24. Next hop, we need to configure a next hop. Let's click the create button under next hop. Specify the next hop IP, it's going to be 10.5.5.1. Click OK. And click OK again. And that's basically all we need to do for VSRX1. And so we can do a few different things. We can preview changes and see what's happening. We can see here the CLI of what that configuration is doing. And we can also select XML to get an XML output. Let's go back to CLI. Let's click close. 
And we could save this and deploy them later, or we can just select the save and deploy button to save the configuration and also deploy it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's click run now, or we could schedule it later as well. And a new job window will pop up and let us know what happens. And we can see the job is a success. Let's click OK to dismiss that window. Now we need to go to VSREX2. Configuration, modify configuration. Select static routes. And what are we doing here? Well, we need to configure something, some form of static routing that will allow access to hosts on the internet as well as access to the user. And so what we could do is we could configure a static route that just points towards the user, then configure another static route that points towards the internet. However, we really only have one interface that is going somewhere else than locally connected prefixes. And so in that regards, we just need to configure a static default route that points out the interface that is pointing towards VSREX1. So let's go ahead and do that. Do four zeros, prefix of zero. Now, next hop, we need to click the create button for the next hop. And we need to specify the next hop of 10.5.5.254. And that'll be the IP address that is on VSRX1 for the GIGI001 interface. Click OK. And again, click OK. And then let's save and deploy those changes. And we'll do it right now. We could schedule it later, but there's no need to do that. And that configuration was deployed successfully. So let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of these devices and look at the routing table and run a few verification commands. Here is the CLI of VSREX1. Look at the route table for static routes and we see that we have two static routes. One static route pointing out GIGI000, that's the default static route. Then we have another static route, which is the static route that points towards the email server that is pointing out the GIGI001 interface. And here's VSRX2. Let's look at the routing table for static routes, and we can see we have one default route that points out the GIGI001 interface towards VSRX1. Well, let's go ahead and jump to a virtual router device, and we can run some verification commands from here. Now, this virtual router device is a VSRX that is split up into multiple virtual routers, and these virtual routers represent the user and also the email server. So, first, let's ping that internet host from the user routing instance. And great, we can see we can reach the internet host. That's perfect. And then let's attempt to reach the email server from the user. And again, great, we have communication there. So traffic is getting to the email server and then returning from the email server. And then lastly, Let's ping the internet host from the email server. And that test shows that things are working well also. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure static routes and also verify them using Security Director. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning Paths, Industry Segment and Technology Specific Training Paths, Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.